All right, welcome. Today we're going to take a look at sections 4.1 and 4.2. And what I really want to do here is talk about some of the patterns in graphing quadratic equations. Now, the two types of forms that we're going to look at in this video are going to be standard form and vertex form. And so we're going to take a look at those two guys. And, and really what you're going to need to know about standard form is that it's the A, the B, and the C. Those are all going to be your coefficients that are sitting in front of uh, your variables, x squared, x. C is just a constant. And then for vertex form, uh, f of x is going to equal A, and then times quantity x minus h squared plus k. And remember, one of the things that you want to take a look at in vertex form, your h and your k these two pieces right here are going to give you the coordinates for your vertex. But one of the things with the vertex in HK form, you have to remember to switch the sign of the H that you're presented with. So let's take a look at our first couple of pieces, and I want to see if we can pick up a pattern here. Now, we're going to take a look at three graphs. One of them is F of X equals X squared. G of X is 2X squared, and H of X is 3 x squared. Now what I want to do is just kind of look at where the vertex is and we can kind of see that and that's at 0, 0. So we're going to fill that in our table of values. Now if I were to mark 0, 0 on my graph, that's located right here. Now if I go 1 to the right of 0 and I plug 1 into x squared, 1 squared is 1 and 2 squared is 4. Now those properties hold true because a quadratic is symmetrical. So when I go back one, I'm still going to get one. And when I go back two from my vertex, I'm going to end up getting four. So, Or I could verify those by plotting those, uh, putting those values into f of x and coming up with the values there. So one, one, and then two up here at four. Now if I were to put three in, then 3, 3 squared, would be all the way up here at 9. Now, using symmetry, I can plot my other points right here. Okay, so those are going to be the points that are located on the graph of f of x equals x squared. Now, notice the relationship here between my vertex and each one of the points. All right, for my vertex... I'm going to move over 1, up 1, because what's 1 squared, that's 1. Now, again, I'm going to go in both directions, over 1, up 1 to the right, and over 1, up 1 to the left. Now, if I go 2 to the right, 2 squared is 4. So I, I start from the vertex, I go over 2, and I go up 4. Same thing on the left-hand side of the vertex. And then lastly, if I were to go up th over to the right 3, I would go up 3 squared, which is 9. And again, from the vertex, I go over 3 to the left, and 3 squared gives me 9. So that's the pattern that we're going to kind of take a look at here. Now, when we take a look at g of x, now we've got 2x squared. So again, my vertex is still at 0, 0. But notice what happens when I put in my values of x into g of x. I've got 0, 0, but instead of... 1, 1. Now I'm going to have 1, 2. And negative 1, 2. And I, when I put in positive 2 or negative 2, in both cases when I square that and then multiply it by 2, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. So I go over 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And over here, now for both of these, notice what happened. Instead of going over 1, up 1 like I did before, I'm starting to go over 1 and up 2. Over 1, up 2. Notice my constant here in front of the x squared term is 2. So I'm doubling how much I'm going up by. So I'll still go over 2 to the right, but instead of going up 4, because 2 squared is 4, now I'm going to double that. And instead of going up 4, notice I went up 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I go up 8 to that next point. And same thing if I go to negative 2. If I go to the left of the vertex, I would go up 8 as well. So that's one of the pieces that we're going to take a look at. Now I think you guys have this down. 
and you can do h of x probably on your own. If we were to fill in that table, we're going to have very similar results. So what I want you to do is go ahead and fill in the table and see if you see the pattern that's there from the vertex and then to, above, to the right of the vertex to to the left of the vertex. So how did you do with it? Did you fill the table out correctly? Now again, notice we're going to start from our vertex and we're going to go over one, two, we're going to go over one, but this time up three because notice our constant in front of x squared this time is three. So that's going to be the same pattern when we go over to the left. We'll go to the left one and up three. Now our second point if we go to the right 2 and to the left 2, instead of going up 2 squared would be 4. We're going to go over 3 times as much as that because, again, our constant in front of the x squared is 3. So instead of going over 4, now we would go um, up 12 instead of just up 4, which in this case is kind of off the graph here a little bit. But that's kind of the general idea. So it's always going to be in that pattern over 1, up 1 over 2, up 4, over 3, up 9, unless you have a constant in front of the x squared. If you have a constant in front of it, then you just multiply that and it'll change the scale factor by that number accordingly. Now let's take a look at a couple examples here and kind of take a look, piece some pieces together here when we've got this. Now, what I want you to do first is write down the letters for A, B, and C. A is negative 1, B is negative 2 and C has a value of negative 5. Now the first piece we're going to play with is going to we, we've got to find where the vertex is. So to do that we're going to start by writing x equals negative b over 2a because our formula is in standard form. Now you have to be really careful make sure you substitute correctly but remember it's negative b in front of 2 times negative 1. So the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2, and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, so we end up with negative 1. Now that gives me my x-coordinate for my vertex. So to find the y-coordinate, I'm going to plug negative 1 into my original function. So I'll have the opposite of negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 minus 5. When I evaluate that for negative 1, I come up with So how did you do with that? Did you come up with negative one four for the negative four for the coordinates of the vertex? Hopefully that you did. Now when we go and we plot that on our grid, negative one, negative four, so that's going to be right here. Now I want to turn our attention next to the value of a. A is going to tell us two things. One, it's going to tell us the direction. And since a is negative, our parabola or quadratic is going to open down. The second thing it's going to tell us is whether we're going to move in that 1 to 1, 2 to 4, 3 to 9 pattern. And since A has a value of 1, we're going to stick to that pattern right there. So what we're going to do is go to the right one and down one. We'll go to the left one and down one. Then going back to the vertex, we're going to go to the right two, but down 1, 2, 3, 4. And again, we'll go back to the vertex and go over to the left two and down one, two, three, four. And then I'll use a smooth curve to correct it, collect or connect the dots. Make sure you put arrows on the end because that's some technical pieces right there that you've got to make sure that you have. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the increasing, decreasing domain and range. Now, we already know domain. That's always going to be all real numbers. So... Um, we're just going to put negative infinity to positive infinity, and that's how you'll represent that with um, interval notation. Now, increasing and decreasing, both of these, they both deal with the x-coordinates. Okay, And the x-coordinate that they deal with is the x-coordinate from our vertex. Now, with increasing and decreasing, you always want to think about that also in relation to slope because increasing, you want your picture, you want your parabola to kind of be slanted upwards like that. Decreasing is going to be the interval that's going down, slanted in a negative direction. So when we talk about increasing and decreasing, we're going to be kind of analyzing the slope of the parabola on each side of where the vertex is. 
Now, if I look on the left side of the vertex, my graph is kind of slanted this way, which is in an upward or positive direction, which means that's going to be the direction or the interval where the function is increasing. Now, I'm increasing from the left side of negative 1, so that's going to be denoted by negative infinity all the way up to negative 1. And then I'm going to be decreasing. I'm going to be going in a negative slope direction down the other side of my vertex. So that's going to be from negative 1 onward to positive infinity. Now, one of the hardest things students have a challenge with initially is getting thinking about that increasing and decreasing is dealing with the x-coordinates so increasing decreasing and domain those all deal with the x-coordinate of your vertex all right now we've got one other piece to talk about and that's the range now the range deals with the y-coordinate not the x-coordinate but the y-coordinate of our vertex so if I look at my vertex I've got a y-coordinate of negative 4 now, notice where negative 4 is on the y-axis. So if I draw a horizontal line, which in this case is there in blue, at y equals negative 4, that's the highest point of my vertex, so the of the parabola. So the, it's from everything below negative 4 up to and including y equals negative 4. So since everything is below, that's going to go from negative infinity all the way up to negative 4. But since it includes negative 4, negative 4 will get a hard bracket on it. Infinity and negative infinity always, always, always get a soft bracket. So that's going to be the interval notation for increasing, decreasing domain and range. Now, let's get those sorted out in set notation. And there's going to be two ways that we go ahead and talk about that in set notation. Now, when we look at the increasing and decreasing values for set notation, what I want you to take a look at is where the infinity is, or the negative infinity. That's going to be kind of the place where the x goes next to the greater than or the less than sign. The number piece is going to go on the other side. So where we're increasing, we're increasing from all the x's less than negative 1 up to negative 1. So that's why negative 1 is on the right, and we say that x such that x is less than negative 1. We're decreasing from negative 1 all the way on, all the x values after negative 1 are where the function goes down or has that negative slope, or all your y values will be negative. So since we're decreasing all the time after negative 1, we say our x's are going to be greater than negative 1 to give us that negative slope. All right, so that's one way to write each of those using set notation. Now for the other way, we're going to take the negative infinity and negative 1, and we're going to put an x right in between that. So that's going to look like this. So I'll have the curly bracket, which is just called a brace or, or a bracket. And then we'll have x such that negative infinity is less than x, which is less than negative 1. So that's one way that we can write that. Now, decreasing, see if you can kind of pick up that pattern. We'll have negative 1 and then infinity, and then we're going to have the x in the middle. So that's going to look like this, where we'll have x such that negative 1 is less than x is less than infinity. And notice how the negative 1 and the infinity are on the outside of the x, just like if we write it in interval notation, kind of where the comma is. You want to think about that, like that's where you're going to stick x, and then you'll have less than on each side of where the x's are. Now, domain, we're not really going to worry about so much that in set notation, uh, but you could write that several different ways. So that could be written like one of these two ways. And I've even seen it written a third way, which most of you will probably experience when you get to a college textbook. And a college-level textbook will probably notate it like this. So that's going to be this piece highlighted right here above our, above our table. We, have at, we would have x such that x. And then we have this little symbol. It's actually the name of the symbol is called epsilon. Uh, but it means is an element of. So it's kind of like a C with with that looks kind of like an E that got bent over. And then we have this real fancy looking R, and the R is kind of like the paragraph symbol in English, but it's with the letter R instead of the letter P. Because in English, sometimes how you, you get corrected to write a new paragraph, or you have a paragraph entry, 
math will use the same thing for all real numbers, but they'll use the letter R. So sometimes you'll see that notation in upper level uh, textbooks. Now let's move on to the range. For our range, since we're going from negative infinity all the way up to negative 4. Now again, we've got to be careful here because the range deals with the y coordinate. Now, so when you write that, make sure that you write y such that. And we have our little brace right there. So we want to make sure that we've got y instead of the letter x. Now since we go all the way up to negative 1, now take a look at the increasing and decreasing functions. Which one is the range more similar to using the interval notation? Is it more like increasing or is it more like decreasing? If you said increasing, you would be correct. So you'd write it the same way but using the letter y and instead of just less than, you're going to have less than or equal to because it includes y equals negative 4. So then we put in our negative 4 and that's that. Now again, we would write the set notation very similarly, but this time using the letter y instead of x. Go ahead and do that and see what you got. So how'd you do with that? You a rock star yet? Because check it out. If you have that exactly and pay attention to the symbol where you have... Uh, right after the y before the negative 4, that's less than or equal to, not just less than. So small detail there, but make sure you pay attention to that because that is definitely important. Now I know this video is getting a little bit long, so we're going to break it up into two videos. And we're gonna, I want you to come back and watch the other video if you need to on doing the same process, going through the same thing, but this time our function is going to be presented in vertex form. So that'll be the end of this video, and I'll send you a link, or you can look at the next video on doing the same process, but this time our function would be in vertex form. All right, peace out.